structure of this is going to work. This is, you know, this is your community. I mean, you're going to have your own leaders. Um, you're going to be able to set your agenda for the most part. So even though I'm here, I'm basically here as a liaison. You know, it's your connection with the council. And whatever the council does, I will do as thin as relevant and pass it on to you. But um, our whole goal is to make you guys more promise. And, and, you know, with the course direction of the council, but you guys run your committee and, uh, and set your priorities for the most part uh, with guys from the council. So that being said, um, this, I would like to, I guess, first of all, elect a, a chairperson. Uh, does anyone have any strong feelings about that in terms of who would like to be chairperson? If not, I'm just going to pick somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Because I have too many things going on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cynthia, how about you? I think you'd be good. I don't know how much time do I need? <laughs> uh, of course. Um, I look after, like I said, a lot of the older ladies. Like normal, you know, they're calling me up. And they need to go to day or night. Or the night. I need you to help. Always got what I'm doing. Yes, I understand. One thing about this committee is that um, it's not going to be terribly meeting intensive, I don't think. Um, the, the goal that we have right now is to establish some kind of an event, uh, you know, with regard to uh, dreams like a barber type day event in the fall for us. It could uh, be pretty much. Um, you know, there's a lot of possibilities, including just planting trees or tree maintenance. So it's not going to be something where you're going to be up here every couple of days in the week. You know, okay. So. Yeah. And, and you know, I just want to tag along with you talking about the events in the fall. Um, I, I was talking to Jeff about this. I think that we should probably tag along with National Night Out and just do it at the same time. Because if we do that, well, there's going to be the spectacular and, and, and and National Night Out, I think that would be hard to have a third event in that time. And I think that we would have an audience then for whatever we decide to do. Right. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And you know, I think we, we'll deal with that in a minute. First, we right. need to go and organize some good officers. So, um, Jacob, how about you? Or Iris? That one. Be, be the chairman of this group. No, I thought Cindy was going Are you going to do it? I thought you said that you had conflicts. I think you can do it. It's going to be that time of truth. One of the things about, I mean, for the chair, for the vice chair, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we decided to reinitiate the liaison concept and have, you know, Brent as, as the person here to assist in it. So the council liaison is there to help with you know agenda creation with yeah you know, sort of Robert's rules I mean it's not they're not there to tell you what to do or how to do it um, but to give you you know whatever you ask for in order to do it so that the chair role the vice chair role isn't like you know being the mayor or mayor pro tem um, you got staff support you've got council support you got the support of the other members of the, of the committee you got my support of course. Yeah, so so it's um, you know it sounds sort of bigger and meaner than it really is. Um, it's a it's but it's a, it's a necessary position because somebody somebody has to run run the meeting this time, um, and and somebody is responsible for you know, sort of collecting the agenda items and working with staff to get the agenda posted so it so it can go on. So it's not it's not as onerous as it may sound. Um, I encourage you to, to, you know, step up if you've got any, um, any feeling. It's a great experience. Yeah, that's right. And uh, basically, uh, the, the, the meetings, the, the chair will run the meeting, and you just run according to Robert's rules. You have a discussion, then you, first of all, I'm sorry, you get a motion, and a second, then you have a discussion, and then you vote. Pretty much it. Staff will be here to help you. I'll be here to help. Um, so anyway, do I have a motion for uh, Cindy Jones to be our chairman? Um, I'll make a motion that Cindy Jones be our chair. Okay. Nominated as our chairperson. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. All right, second by Jacob. 
Uh, any discussion? <laughs> you, you, you seem very knowledgeable and passionate about uh, nature. Oh, it's, it's a passion. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I grew up with family who was all about preserving, protecting trees, wildlife, mm -hmm. feeding. Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay, well, we have a motion and a second. Um, we'll just take a, a vote. So we're going to take a vote on the motion um, that ours is going to be. Hey, I'm sorry, Tim Jack. Sorry. Uh, board member Monica Resco. I'm um, voting yes or no. Yes. <laughs> Mem board member Iris Ramos. Yes. Board member Jacob McElroy. Yes. Board member Cindy Jones. You can vote yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad if you vote against yourself. <laughs> okay, well, we need a, uh, a vice chair person. Um, Monica, would you consider being yeah, a vice chair? Yeah, I'll do a vice chair. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to uh, uh, for Monica to be the vice chair. Do I, do I have a motion? Okay. Jacob makes the motion. Do I have a second? Iris, the second. That's the your first. First. <laughs> I have a question. Okay, now we'll have discussion, so you can ask your question. Um, so I'm new to this whole process. This is the first board I've ever been on. Um, although I've been on committees and groups and this. Do we have a time limit for tonight's meeting? We don't have a time limit, but I'm usually uh, pretty fast. Do we turn this over to the chair at this point, or do I go to? We've been uh, the, the first two meetings. The, the liaison has conducted the meeting okay. for us, and then right. and then set a time for the next meeting where Cindy would pick up. Pick up. Okay. Our sisters, no real time set, but I usually definitely vote the same way. We're really efficient. We, we ought to be uh, in and out of here really quick. You have a conflict or anything? Or? No, I don't have a conflict. Oh, yeah. No, I, well, Cindy's going to run the meeting, so uh, hopefully she won't be here for a long time when she runs it. But it's generally just how long it takes to get to the agenda, and uh, but that's kind of up to the chair to sort of keep the discussion moving so we don't get bogged down and spend a lot of time up here because everybody's busy and meetings, uh, you know, should be conducted efficiently. Okay, so I made a commitment. I volunteered and then I received a letter from Maureen. Thank you very much, Maureen. And um, I still had a lot of questions about how this works and um, who was the who was the key board for us and what work have we done and what is our goal. I mean, there are questions like that. Yeah. And I don't know if they fit in this context or another context. I think they fit in this context. I think what we uh, just kind of go by the agenda, we go ahead and finish up the, uh, the vote on, on the officers, and then we can go into review the governing ordinance briefly, and then I think that's a good time for to go over those questions. So let's finish this piece of business. Yeah, we need to take the vote. Okay. On the vice chair. I can take the vote. Yeah, you seconded the motion. Yeah. And that has to be, now she has to do the call around. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to take a uh, a vote on a motion to make Ms. Blasco the co chair. Right. Vice chair, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Board member Cindy Jones. Board member Jacob McElroy. Yes. Board member Iris Ramos. Yes. And board member Monica Rasco. Yes. Okay, and uh, I think Iris number four is going to be where we kind of maybe get more in depth and, and answer some of your questions. Um, what we're going to do, I think, is just make reference to the governing uh, governing ordinance, which is attached, starting on page three of your packet. Uh, the main part of the search on page five. You may be only familiar with Iris yourself with this, but uh, tomorrow there is a, uh, a change to the audience that's on the agenda, so this may be changing. So I wouldn't spend a lot of time looking at this because it, it may change, but the general concept of it is, is to protect heritage trees, 
um, and also to uh, to deal with with oak wilt uh, and also how you know, people you know, when they can cut oak trees, how they should cut oak trees, and that sort of thing. But again, a lot of it's going to change or may change. So uh, at least this gives you the bare bones of what we're working off of. This is the ordinance that it creates the tree ordinance. Um, but again, that, that's probably going to change a little bit. Um, so I, I'm not going to sit here and make you read it, and I'm certainly not going to read it to you. So that's where you start if you want to kind of get a you know, what, uh, what you're doing, Jeff. Yeah. Um, one of the things the ordinance does, though, is is require the city to create a tree board, which is which is you. Um, and and where we took the language um, was from Tree City USA. And so one of our one of our goals is to become designated as a as a tree city USA. And so there are there are some 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 um, some things that we have to do in order to earn that designation. And so that's part of what you know you're going to be doing. So you know taking you know sort of getting an inventory of you know heritage trees is a is a you know fairly big deal. I mean that's a that's a big job, um, but that's one of the things over time that you want to do. Having that event that we could say is an Arbor Day event is one of the one of the primary requirements uh, to become Tree City USA. So that can be you know as little as saying, hey, it's Arbor Day in Wood Creek. You know, here's some tree saplings. Saplings, you know, go you know go plant them in your front yard, um, and you know, done. I'd like to see us do a little bit. Yes. Iris. Do I have to say something in order to? No, not not in not in this meeting today. You're fine. Okay. So, um, what is Well, we haven't we haven't said that yet. So, from what Monica was saying, you know, perhaps we do our Arbor Day in conjunction with National Night Out. So. We do sort of the Arbor Day and it would blend into National Night Out. National Night Out is in October. August 2nd. Well, August 2nd or October. Right, or October, but uh, Parks and Rec said oh, they're going to do it now. They're going to go into Well, it. no, they, they want the city council to do it. National uh, Night Out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think, I, don't, I didn't think they were going to do that. Um, but anyway, so, so anyway, it would be in conjunction with that. So if it's August second, then it's August second. But but we don't we don't have to do it on Harbor Day. We can do it a different day than that, and I would recommend yeah. that because Call it's, it's Day. really fun. August second is an Arbor Day. August second is National Night Out. Oh yeah. So trees are generally planted. Not in August. <laughs> in the fall. Right. Or late. Right. In the fall, because they like to go into the dormant season when it's cooler weather, when the root system is growing and not up above the ground, it's growing. You have that dormant season of the roots. Yes. So if it if it's helpful, um, my background is as an event planner, um, and so you know we may you know, just sort of put our heads together and say, okay, well we'll we'll do if we, if we do it in August, we'll do it as education. Um, and education only, and then and then work with like local nursery, so that in November we get a supply of saplings that we can give out with instruction on how to properly plant them in the fall, so that they're they're not being planted in August. The city funds that. The city funds that. And then will we get the guidelines to be part of the tree city ordinance? Um, it's covered fairly well in the ordinance. Okay. If, if you read through the okay. if you read the, through the whole thing, okay. it's got the requirements for tree city Okay. And in case a heritage tree, am I correct, is a tree over 100 years old? Yeah. It's, it's based on it's the by the statute. Uh, but it's based on the caliber, I believe. Oh, okay. How big is 24 inches diameter or diameter? Yeah, that, that's defined. Also, by the um, so yeah, Jeff is right. I mean, 
we're looking at we're planning something we were thinking of fall uh, again that's going to be up to you what we're trying to do this is kind of like when we got our dark sky initiative uh certification there was a checklist we had to go through to uh -huh. get that and that's sort of what part of the reason the board is here is to check that box we have the board b the board's going to plan an event with regard you know to trees um and, and so that that's kind of part and parcel of it trying to become a the tree city USA. The other thing is that you're going to be asked to do the council's or maybe as to do the council's going to vote this tomorrow is a, a tree survey, conduct a tree survey for trees that are on city property. And that's something that we'll get more detail on tomorrow, but just keep that in the back of your mind. If you're looking at this ordinance, it's in your packet. The uh, enabling part of that is uh, 91.04 that sets up the tree board. Um, I don't know the whole lot of changes coming to that. We get this new ordinance comes through, but uh, that's the basics. It is now. Right. Along with that 9104, um, we also need to draw some names for the term. Okay. Whether it's a one year term or a two year term. And there, we also need voter registration cards. Okay. Yeah, so we will need to get that. And we also need that, you know, the things we sent already, the public access information form, the public, uh, public information act training, and the Open Meetings Act training monitoring, so there's some stuff. Okay. So, do we want to do that now for the terms? Or? Yeah, I guess we can do it now. We are, we're setting it up part of under 91.204 it says that we have standard terms, so I guess someone's going to have a uh, book. Some people are going to have one year terms, mm -hmm. and have two years. Right. And so we don't all get a lot of big stakes here. <laughs> you don't have to take this off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't be reappointed. Right. <laughs> what did you get? Two years. Uh, Jacob, you got two? I, 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 you got two? And you got one. I already got one. You got one. Cindy, you got one. Okay. You got two. Oh, you got two. Yeah, you got two. There are other. We're missing. We're missing. Uh, Jacob, yes. what did you get? Two years. Yes, all three of them got two, and then Iris got one, which by for definition means that um, the new person, the new person is on, on one year. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Who said you plan ideas to myself? No. no. <laughs> but you can be appointed. Don't worry. No. You, you could be on here for five years, I'm sure, yeah. without any problem. Yeah. It's a technicality of the of the the tree board structure that Tree City, Tree City USA put out. It's it's actually pretty unusual to be drawing terms um, for the for the boards. A lot of times the the uh, the board member serves you know the same time as the council member that that uh, nominated them. So there are different ways of doing things. This is one of those areas where the ordinance um, doesn't match up with some of the rest of the stuff we've done. But like I say, your 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 term will be you know one year from now until um, the October of twenty three, or the, for this year for a year from now. Okay, so 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 at, at that point, you know, you may say, well, I you know, I would volunteer to read list. So the, the council would go back out, you know, the citizens and say, okay, well, we have two positions we need to fill on the tree board. Um, Iris puts her name in and said, I'd like to, you know, read a list. Um, and you might read list. then you would get, and then you would go on a two year term after that. So you would serve three years. In the so, so I think that possibly we'll do me. I started the Supreme Court Planner in Lockhart many uh, years ago, mm -hmm. and a big part of it was doing um, recycling. Uh, we brought volunteers, food trailers to all the way, what we needed, connected with adult probation, 
to um, actually man tables and pick in stuff. So and load the trailers and then connect it with the city manager and we wanted to buy the stuff. And so it was a fundraiser for a community project. But I documented everything so that it was an educational process. I was oh, I was writing articles on the newspaper every week. Wow. For people just educating them on how to recycle, how to reuse. Um, but that's I'm just telling you that's an experience. Good. And one of the things that I did on that that I well, was also I won an award for that and gave money to the city for the recycling program. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I would suggest that we separate out dark sky and focus on trees, not trees, but things like bird migration and bats and educate the community on that. Just focus on dark skies. It's for astrology with stars on them. Let's see, the dark skies is done. We already have a dark sky designation. We're just the tree board. It's, so we yeah. have to be done in the legal sense or in the administrative sense, oh, but not in the public awareness sense. Yeah, one of the things that I've thought about with the tree board a lot is that, that of all the all the bodies, all the you know, all the official bodies of the city. Um, the tree board is probably the most educational of all because a lot of what we're doing is, you know, sharing sharing knowledge of you know this great resource that we have um, and how to protect it. Because you know, without our trees, we're not wood creek anymore. We're just creek. So, along with that, and, and I think we need to emphasize uh, trees and protecting trees and preserving trees. I I think. Maybe a month before we decide to do this, whenever Arbor Day is, I think it's spring, early spring, but the development trees are being looked at. That we think about taking some of those sampling samples, giving them to the schools and the teachers, and having special programs where we educate the kids about that stuff, mm -hmm. and then have the children plant the trees, teaching them how to plant mm -hmm. and take care of them. So that it's um, a more community inclusive sort of exercise mm -hmm. that focuses on trees and I, I think those, those are good ideas. I think that's part of when you guys start meeting regularly, that that's something you guys can kind of start working in, in your uh, in what you're going to plan for. One of the things you may want to take a look at in the uh, board, uh, I'm sorry, the ordinance, running uh, 1.04 on page nine. The section that specifically sets out some of the duties. You take a look at D, under um, 91.04 on page 9. It starts, it shall be the responsibility of the board to study, to investigate. Does everybody have that section? Yes. Yeah, that's page 11. Uh, page 9. Okay. Uh, responsibility of the board to study, investigate, counsel, and develop, and or annually. Uh, up, and to update annually and administer a written plan for the care, preservation, pruning, planting, replanting, removal, and disposition of trees and shrubs um, in parks, along streets, and in other public areas. That plan is presented annually to the city, and upon their acceptance, shall constitute the official part of the official conference of tree planting in the city. So that, that's another thing, city, to be looking at that uh, overall, that's kind of your overall uh, on the statutory duty right there. That's on top of, or that, that's in conjunction with the event, and also possibly the tree survey that the council may go on. That's kind of the goals, I think, of this uh, committee. Any other thoughts or questions so far before we move on? Um, I just looked up Arbor Day, and it's Friday, April 20th. Okay. It's the official, we don't have to do it on Arbor Day. Yeah, I, I think uh, the point was made that we may want to put it uh, in conjunction with another event so we don't go over non people with events. But the tree planting does have to occur in the fall for Tree City USA did two years ago. Right, that makes sense. So but we'll talk about all that when we have you know when we have our meeting. Right. And then uh Cindy I think was it were you the one to ask for the guidelines from Tree City? Okay. I, there may be the uh, you know an actual document I'm pretty sure there is. I'll either get that to you or I'll I'll have some 
We're going to be certified tree city USA. Yeah. I think you can go online and get that. You can probably just yeah, Google tree city USA. Sure you sure you <laughs> so if you guys can handle it yourself, that's fine. You want to handle it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'll hold it up, um, and uh, I'll uh, I'll get it to Maureen, and she can percolate. I guess that's what I can do. Um, something to to recognize here, and you you will be taking open meetings at a uh, training, but you know understand that you know we operate um, in the open, and, and generally you get things done in, in a meeting that's open. So be careful about uh, calling each other and sort of deciding on things that you're going to do outside of a meeting. It, it's, it's okay sort of to talk, you know, to, to talk about something, but if you go and you add a third person to it, you've you got a quorum started. Okay. And that's, that's not only legal, but it's, it's also just, it's just not the way it's supposed to work. We're supposed to operate openly, and so people are here, they can watch us, and they can comment, and they can provide input. So. Just be careful about that. You're going to learn more about that when you get the training, but understand that you are an open meeting board and you operate here, you know, in the meeting, not behind closed doors. And, uh, so that, that'll, that's, will become second nature to you. But Any questions on that so far? Well, on that one, but real quick before I forget. Um, so, I'm having a years and years of purchasing items from certain nurseries, garden bills. Old, you know, landscaping. Is it okay for one of us to reach out to one of them to say, Would you like to donate to our arbor? Are there any kind of conflict of interest that I need to? I don't see anything. The only thing is make sure it, it's you know authorized by the committee. Okay. You, know, that you guys all decide to do that. And then um, I don't see any issue with conflict of interest. I mean, as long as if the conflict of interest kicks in if you're going to monetarily benefit from something you're voting on. That's typically the trigger. Are you going to make money? I'm voting and I want to make a thousand dollars on this bill. Uh, that's probably a conflict of interest. Or someone in your bank. You know, that, that's typically our city attorneys. People are saying, you know, that it's a monetary kind of test. I don't see that being an impact. I would actually encourage you to reach out to the community and see if, if they're willing to help us out. But always do it as a, as a group. And also run it by staff because they're frankly a lot smarter about these things than, than I am. Than we are run it by them and say, well, you know, the board's decided to do this. Okay. Any other people we challenge next door for a shout out? Like anybody you want to show up for a, um, like right off the bat, I was thinking. What I do in the fall is I go around picking up everybody's fifty bags of oak leaves and I take them to the house and I mow over them umpteen times and that becomes good bridge compost for all my oak trees. Yeah. I don't see no, any, I don't think there's anything like that. Any uh, just if, if you see uh, you know one of your board members put something up, come at the start a chain with two or three members. And then you're starting to get back to the ownership. But I think uh, I don't see any problem with social media. Okay. Yeah. I will throw this in though, but if you post it as a member of the tree board, then we have to keep record of it. Okay, so I can just say just for your information, this yeah. is what you should do now to keep your oak trees healthy. Don't throw your oak leaves in the garbage. Mulch over them and let them feed your trees. Okay. But if, if anybody posts as a member of the tree board, then we have to have it in our archives. Okay. There's a section on the archives communicate telecommunication and videos and um, message boards and things like that for media. In that um, second video by Jenny Kosher speaks directly about that. There's also she talks about what is a quorum. And so um, I think if we were talking about something, if we were gathering leaves together, and then we saw Jacob and pulled him into a conversation, yeah. that would be forming a quorum of people. Right. So we just wouldn't do that. I, I don't see any issue with social media. I, I, but I guess if you do it as a member of the tree board, then 
we don't have that in our archives. What you may do is just share it or cut and paste it and email it to the city. I'm going to do it as a general your neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Let you know. Yeah, and we'll get the hang of this uh, okay. as you go forward. We're, you know, we're always reticent to, to go on social media and, and represent yourself as a part of the body. Uh, but it'll be useful to get the word out. So, you know, there, there's a balance there, and you'll, you'll figure it out. So, um, we do have someone, public comments? Yeah, did you want to talk to us? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, how are you doing? Oh, thank you. <laughs> He's a handful sometimes. Um, my name's Jim Weist, 53 Champion Circle, right down the road here. Um, on uh, April 14th, um, I unknowingly was trimming my tree and didn't know that I had to have a But uh, And I was trimming one particular tree that was uh, threatening my house. Roots were growing underneath, limbs were hitting the root. Unfortunately, it was an oak tree, and so um, I was uh, uh, called in. Uh, well, um, city manager came over and uh, informed me and did the verbal uh, stop work order. And so um, later on, I got this letter telling me my discretion. And uh, I only have one issue with it. Uh, it says that uh, uh, a protected heritage oak defined as a tree trunk diameter of 24 caliper inches or greater measured at its diameter breast height. And the letter uh, ascertains that mine was measured at 33 inches. However, I was witnessing the measurement. And the measurement was not diameter, it was circumference. It would be 33 inch <coughs> circumference, which comes to about a 10 inch diameter. Okay, there were no calipers, there weren't anything, just, just a measurement around the tree. And so, um, I'm being assessed $900 for a tree that's actually just 10 inches in diameter. I wish to. Jones. Yeah, and, and Actually, Jim, I, I thank you for that. I do. And uh, let me say this we have to be real careful in the so we can only discuss things that are on the, our agenda. Okay. So, this is a public comment, so we can listen, okay. but we can't engage because that's a violation. Um, I'm happy to talk to you after the meeting. Uh, the mayor's here. Uh, okay. You know, our goal, and this is all I can say, is in general, is we really try to operate as a custom service type. Operation. Okay. And try not to be punitive, but you know, I can't really comment because then I'm going to violate all the meetings because it's not posted at a time. But uh, we ought to be through fairly soon. If you want to stick around and, and talk to us, that'd be great. Okay. Uh, I, uh, you can also email us. Uh, our, our emails are on the, uh, the website. Feel free to do that anytime. Um, and I'll give you one of my cards later. My phone number's on it. So. Okay, I, I knew there was probably a procedure. I just had no idea what it was, and, and I figured this is the first step. So, yeah, I'll, I'll hang around and, and be happy to talk with y'all. And I have some photographic proof and <laughs> right next door. You can take a look at it yourself if you want. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you. Just understand that we are constrained by law from talking too much about it in our open meeting. So, but afterward, uh, we have a talk to you. So, okay. Thank, thank you, Jim. Okay, let me see where we're at. Okay, so I think we've kind of gone through the council with the on discussion of group roles and responsibilities. You've got your, your uh, name of the statute there. Uh, you've got our overall goals. I think you guys are ready to go. Next thing we want to do is, is talk about future meeting schedules. Uh, when you guys can get together again and start trying to firm up how you want to go forward. Um, now, Jeremy, any thoughts on that? Um, all my Mondays are pretty open for estimates, and so any any Monday of the month we could go second or third. I think those would be pretty good for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
many times do we need? Just a new design. What we're talking about the next group. Correct. And then what the other groups have done, if it helps, is to say, okay, well, Monday's a good time. And I like, you know, the afternoons about, you know, four, four thirty spring, you know, whatever that whatever that is. And so they say, okay, well, let's make it the you know, second Monday of the month. And then so the second Monday of June would be this month. So you, so you sort of set up the pattern, and then <laughs> the pattern sets, you know, your first official meeting. And can this be changed throughout the uh, the course? Oh, sure. Okay. So since so you don't have to be committed to you know every Monday of the month or whatever first one is, I mean, you know, as you need to, I think. This meeting. Yeah. So so by ordinance, like the city council. Has their regular meeting set. I mean, it's going to be this time, this place, every single month. That's the regular meeting. But a special meeting, you can do you know, anything. Else. So okay. with with these groups, I mean, you don't have to go through that. You don't have an you don't have an ordinance that requires you to, to set that meeting. So you know, you can go along on the on the you know third Monday for six months and just say, hey, this didn't work out. So so okay, let's let's switch it. You can do that. That's not a problem. And and what you can do is put on your agenda, you know, closing the closing each meeting, the closing agenda item can be discussed the time of the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of what we did. What is bad? Everybody, if you have days that you cannot do it or times that you cannot do it, this is the time to say it mm -hmm. because the city calendar is pretty full. And then since Maureen has a full of the city calendar so she can just when they touch, this room is still there. We would meet, um, we would post meeting time mm -hmm. and then have somebody to record it. Mm -hmm. yes, the, 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 the staff is there to support. Yeah, they'll, they'll be back. They'll, they'll post mm -hmm. and then they'll be here to take them in. And, and your meetings are. Right now, citizens can, the meeting is being recorded and it will be the video and the audio will be on the website in a few days so people can go back. But this is a live meeting, so. And it is, it is being live stream, right? I will know where to sit next time. This camera here does this view. I mean, that camera shows that whole side of the room in one view, and then this whole yeah. side of the room in the other view is weird. Um, um, should we go ahead and spend the day for the next meeting on Monday since Jacob has the most, you know, the schedule? <laughs> so, what what time? What time is good? 4 30 is good for me. This okay. one's pretty convenient. Okay. Yeah. I was uh, with the council that had a meeting right before. We won't, we won't be doing that. Yeah, that's just the first meeting. So, um, what, what, which Monday at 4 30 is it all? Second, I'm sorry, which one? The three off. We can do the second. Uh, the yeah, second I, I, Monday of the month. Can we do 13? For the. After the month. Well, let's not do that. <laughs> she probably wouldn't see us. <laughs> I can have the review there. Second Monday is 30. Yeah. It is. That's next month. Um, okay, we can do that. Yeah, 4 30. June 13th, 4 30. Yes. Here. Yeah, 4 30. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, practically, I mean, Brent may, I may need him on the best enough of this, I'm sure. Uh, in terms of like setting your agenda uh, and deciding what you want to talk about, how, how does this type of committee do that? Because I know we do it, we send you our agenda items that we talk to staff and generate an agenda. So, how do these guys so you know, at this level, um, Cindy is the collector of agenda. So, anybody, you know, anybody on the board can say, I want this item or these items. You know, on the next agenda, you just send an email. You know, you can call and just say, let's talk through some of these things because that's just one on one. That one's easy. Um, you know, you and Monica can sit together and talk or grab Brent and the three of y'all sit and, and go over 
you know, some agenda items that some of the stuff that you're going to get is going to come down from council that, hey, we think the three board needs to take a look at this. And so that sort of becomes an automatic agenda item. Um, but basically, you're feeding agenda items to Cindy. She's sort of taking it all down um, and then working with staff to actually create it. The agenda actually goes into a, a special piece of software, item by item. Um, and that's what generates this. Um, mm -hmm. what you, like what you have in front of you, oh. but 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 staff, you sort of have the the items, and then you know, work with staff to turn it into the task. What the parts that I don't count for the form until yeah. folks, so uh, you can loop me in. You know, two people can loop me in. I don't count yeah. if you need me. So uh, that's just some time help. Okay. Um, uh, you still have the, the, the list of phone numbers that you. Um, I've got your email address. I don't know if I have yours yet. Why don't you ever write that down? What I'll do is I'll circulate a list of names and phone numbers to everybody with the email addresses, and then I'm going to let you guys run. You know? So he will be here at your meetings, or somebody will. I mean, if, if Brent can't be here for some reason, you know, he can go phone me up and say, hey, can you sit in on the tree board or call somebody else on the council that can act as liaison for that meeting? But, but you know, that's part of his role is just to be. You know, your your guy on the council. Okay. He picked it himself. Okay. Okay. So, um, the our mandate here on page nine is grand, and I appreciate the scope of your confidence. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm also curious about when we actually organize. I mean, in, in setting, set the agenda for CD. Um, so, yeah, the timing, the timing is really pretty important because the agenda has to be posted um, at least 72 hours before the actual meeting. So, so if your meeting's on Monday, you, know, you really need to act, you know, aim for Thursday, the Thursday prior, no later than, um, to get it in the system and, and sent out online. And put on the bulletin board out here. Yeah, and, have to have to yeah. Right. Well, you, well, you have to have the information, but I mean, that's when it has to be. It has to be posted by by the third. Yeah. So we usually back off at least a week from that. And so, okay, so get everything to us by the Wednesday before, and that gives us a full week to do the compilation, ask any questions, um, yeah. work with staff. You know, yes, they're yes, great yes. at say, listen, here's some, here's the language. You know, like, let us help you a little bit with the language on that because that's not really a motion, you know, whatever. So they're, they're, I mean, that's, that's what your tax dollars did. They pay these people and help you do your tax. Come on. And, but that being said, that, that's also the week of the city council meeting. So the Wednesday before it's going to have to be moved earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. but they'll, they'll work. I mean, they, they will, you know, pull you and say, okay, here's, Here's the schedule. I mean, we, we, that's in general, you want to back it up a couple of weeks before the meeting and really get serious about it. Um, but, you know, Brent and, and Brenton and Maureen and, and, and Suzanne can help you with like literal dates. So it's like if you do, if you do this on this day, then you can do this on this day, you can do this on this day, and it's So I think what Maureen is trying to say is that she would like it on June 6th this time. That she has a forward. If the agenda has to be posted on the 10th, the council meeting is on the 8th maybe. of that week. Let's talk with the So the agenda has to be posted by Friday, June 10th. Council meeting is June 8th. So that they would be posting the council the previous. So you have to work with Maureen and Suzanne because on what is their capability is. So it may affect you having to have your agenda a little early because there's a lot of stuff popping on. Like May 31st would be comprehensive plan committee. That's another agenda they have to prepare. Then there is uh, Joseph, the we have the so take that into consideration when you're turning your agenda. 
early is always better, first of all. And second is you don't have to accomplish all this in the first week. Yeah, you've got you've got the, the gift of time. You know, so so I'm this is what curious about how we get started. So it would be like picking up the phone, calling Cindy and saying, I, I would really like to discuss this mm -hmm. at a meeting. Mm -hmm. We probably all live in different parts of the entire Wood Creek here. Mm -hmm. So each one, I, like myself, I know that I have my neighborhood of McGregor, Spalding, Champion, Overlook. Um, I guess people stop me and say, hey, I need some advice on where you live. This is down the road because I drop by your house at the time. You want me to go by there and look. So, it was probably through all of us. We just kind of took on our own neighborhood. That that may be something you want to put on your first agenda is talk about you know separating the city into quadrants and then sort of saying okay well this obviously I live here so I'll take this you yeah. know I've got this area I've got this area if that's something that's going to be helpful to the to the board to sort of say okay well you know especially because when you start getting into something like an inventory. You know, it's a lot easier to inventory your immediate neighborhood than to just drive around to the whole city. I'm going to say something, and this is same song, same verse. <laughs> when you talk about streets, particularly heritage streets, uh, you are going to we need to think beyond the city limits because we have. A very we have an extraterritorial jurisdiction, and some of our areas of extraterritorial jurisdiction are very, uh, how would I say, our choice properties. Let me put it that way. No, good day. Our choice properties for people who are seeking to do commercial or maybe residential development. And one of the things that it has is. It's been tested in court, and the city the city that took this to court, which is San Antonio, that they predict prevail, that the city has jurisdiction to protect street. So if somebody wants to build a subdivision from downtown of uh, Wintersville Parkway in the ATK, they have to they have to submit plans and they have to protect. They have to be in the same circumstances. What trees have to be protected or be replaced? All of that, the city has. If the city is not hands off, the city doesn't have the hands done. So, this is when you think about you want to protect the city of Wood Creek and the canopy and the beauty of Wood Creek. Our EDJ is critical area also for future. Land use. If we are going, that's where we see development coming up. Some of the, some very, very, how can I say, wooded, and Jacob, what's the right way? Three, three days. Green space. Some, 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 some properties in the EPJ that are green and have a lot of trees in them and are probably habitat for some. Species and dangerous species are for sale. So this is all the things that that I say. I don't want to ask you to play. The place is very full, but um, we uh, that's in the future. Uh, it's more it's more the responsibility of planning and zoning. It's more the responsibility of but you will you may be called upon. There might be a developer going to do with some of your inspections. Reason, reasonable makes good green a desirable place to live. And it, 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 it is something that we, we are threatened. We are threatened by the government. We are threatened by both worlds. It's a passion of mine. I have drafted the initial three documents because I believe that we need to stay together. If you lose your trees in your house by the government, Mm -hmm. the danger of fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these are the things that you know we are we have the climate climate change thing. I lived in Wood Creek for many years, longer than Jacob's been around. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
and I know that I can tell you that the the summers of Cindy stay here for a long time. Our summers are different, are far more intense. That that we have more days when we have more heat. We have more days when we don't have rain. So we're threatened. And so that's we have to protect do the best we can. Our water resources are threatened, and then we have people who want to hey, they want to build something, let's go to the county, they have all this land. No, we don't have any land, but we don't want them to stop coming because there's no land. We want them to protect the resources. So, you have to say, let me say this, I want to sort of echo what Aurora said. Uh, this is important, and you're an important board. Um, you know, the city council are, are the folks that make the actual policy, but you guys are going to be out there working, and you will have a lot of suggestions. You need the eyes and ears, so you're really, really important. But our goal is to, is to come up with a good tree policy that protects our neighborhood, protects our trees, but we don't want to be so heavy handed to where it, it, it hurts people because it's better if people feel like they're part of the process. And it, you know, this is part of what they believe and part of what they want to do as opposed to just, you know, getting in for the government kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what you're here is to help achieve that balance. You know, um, on, in terms of agenda uh, items, I, I know how Jeff typically handles it. He has the things he wants to do, and, and those go on the agenda normally. Um, then he hears from us, the council people. So, Cindy, you'll have kind of what your outline of what you want to put on your agenda. Mm -hmm. Monica, you will too. And then um, you guys, either by phone or by email, you know, email, uh, it's okay to communicate about putting an agenda together. You know, that's outside the open meetings, you know, or it's considered okay in the open meetings. So if you have something you want, email Cindy and say, I'd like this on the agenda. Cindy may say, okay, or she may say, we don't have time for that. Can we do that next week? You know, that still be the gatekeeper on that. Uh, well, then bring uh, you have the right to, to request and receive the items. Typically, the way they're, let me finish real quick. The way that they're couched is it's either, I want to discuss this, you know, discussion on X. But if you want to actually get a vote on something, you got to couch it in terms of discussion and possible action on X or Y. Staff will help you in terms of putting that together, but that's kind of the format, the general format of the agenda request. I want to talk about this, discuss, or I want to vote on discuss and possible action on Y. So that's kind of how it's put together. Yeah. Um, that's kind of it. The next meeting is going to see June 13th, 4 30. You guys need to be sure to get your agenda you know, put together at times so that these folks have the opportunity to process it. Yeah. I, I just wanted to say something, and I want to mention you know, I don't know Iris, I leave her name, on, but I know Cindy quite well. And this is personal. You are both, this group is, in my opinion, you have. You're fortunate because you have somebody with, with experience, Jacob is, that Jacob brings to the table that can help you in that area, the technical area. You also have a member who has shared a, 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 board, a, a, a board from the, from the chief city and was a successful chair, the master plan that, for parks, and that's mine. So you're not, you're coming in here, you're very lucky. This is my personal opinion. Just, you're very lucky. For those of you, so don't feel nervous. There's experience and there's technical knowledge at your table that will serve you well. And, and of course, you have your council liaison. And so you, so this is, this is, I'm really looking forward to you all being very successful. Well, any, any other thoughts, dreams? No. You don't need an oath. You need a only motion to adjourn. Yeah, we'll do that. But she wants to. She wants to take an oath. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my calendar. I asked about the swearing in, and we don't have to swear. In, but we'll just have to trust you guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the paperwork that the paperwork that you filled out for the you know, open meetings and all, you know, we have that on file.
and so that's sort of sort of it. I mean, you have to. There are there the thing the people you have to swear in are council members and PNZ commission members. Yeah, because those are those are um, by statute. You have to have those things. So so those get sworn in, but the rest of them. I was looking forward to swearing everybody in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, you have, you need a motion. I'll take a motion to adjourn. All right, adjourn. Good morning. Do it.